Hey, what's up? So we're going to be using an SQL injection attack to query the database version on the back end. And specifically in this case, it's either going to be a MySQL or Microsoft relational database running on the back end. Now, in this case, we already know which database is running on the back end. We might not ordinarily know this. It could be an Oracle database, for example. So by sending a specific union injection attack to the back end, we can analyze which database is running and also which version of that database. So we'll have a look at this particular lab. To solve this lab, we need to display the database version string. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. Let's also fire up our proxy software. Now from previous labs, we already know where the union injection SQL vulnerability exists and it's in these categories parameters. So let's just head to gifts as an example and let's just pull in the corresponding HTTP request, which was sent to the back end. So we can see here is the name of the request. In fact, we are going to forward this to the repeater or the request editor as it's known in Zap. So we can see the URL, we have a query string category equals gifts, and we can union inject here. We already know that there are two columns requested on the first part of the query. So if we do something like union select, and let's just select some arbitrary strings. So we'll do ABC, DEF. Now, unlike the Oracle database, we don't actually have to specify a from. In Oracle, we need to specify from, so we do something like from dual. We don't actually need to do this with MySQL or Microsoft. In fact, we can just terminate this particular SQL injection attack right here with our comment character. Let's send that to the back end. Let's see what we get. Now we actually get an internal server error. So this wasn't a successful SQL injection. Let's just play around with this comment character. So another comment character in MySQL is actually this hash symbol. So let's send that to the back end. Let's see if we get something better in the response. So let's just fire this response up in the browser just to confirm that we do have the successful SQL injection attack here. So if we have a look at the rendered page, we can see our injected strings, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we've carried out successful SQL injection attack. Now, just looking at the cheat sheet here for comments, you can see that Oracle uses this double dash as a comment. In fact, if you have a look at the four different database types, the commonality here appears to be this double dash, which works as a comment character in any database. Although we do have this note after MySQL, note the space after the double dash. So it may be that we didn't have a space that we needed, but either way, we can see also the hash works as a comment character in MySQL. When we change the comment character, the SQL injection attack was successful. Now, having a look at the cheat sheet under database version, we can see that the syntax for retrieving the database version is going to change based on which database is running on the back end. So for something like Oracle, we do select banner from V dollar version but they're interested in MySQL or Microsoft. The reason why we're lumping these together is you'll notice that the syntax is the same. It's select at at version. So let's return now to our union injection attack. Now, since the first half of the union query, which we can't see by the way, that's on the back end, but we do know it contains two columns. So we still need to preserve two columns in the right hand side of our union select query here. So instead of ABC, we'll now select at, at version, but we'll also continue to request this DEF string because we need to request two columns. Otherwise, we're going to get an SQL error. SQL won't like it if there are two columns requested on the left hand side of the union select query, but there's only one column requested on the right hand side. So let's just load up our lab because we'll get confirmation if this has successfully solved the lab. Let's send this request to the back end, see what we get. And we get the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. Now that's all well and good, but we'd also like to see the version data output. So in order to do that, we're going to load up the response in our browser. So we've loaded up the rendered output. Let's scroll to the bottom. We should hopefully see 8.0.31 is the version of the database that's running. We could now take that version number of the database and find out some more information. For example, if we take 8.0.31, we find out that it's actually a MySQL database running on the back end. 